Let's talk Texas football. We've been praising Texas, talking about how great the win was. It was awesome, and they deserve all the praise. They deserve uh, celebration because that was a great win. It was one of the greatest wins in the history of Texas football in Tuscaloosa. Uh, but watching the film, yeah, watching the film, I do have a critique. Love it. A criticism, a critique. Okay. Observation. Yes. I want to, I'm not trying to, you know, be a buzz kill here. And I'm not trying to hate on Texas. I know because right now the Texas love is at an all time high. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to point out things that may come back to haunt Texas and keep Texas from having that undefeated season a lot of us would love for them to have. Right. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and I saw this watching the game. Initially, and I went, I went to go back and track it, so I went back and tracked it last night. And it, it actually is something that was a concern. I brought this up actually on the show prior to the season about one of my concerns, things the defense needs to improve on, things they need to get better at. And the secondary in particular has to still improve on, and there's a lot of room for it, improve on defending bunch formations. Uh, bunch formations is clustered receivers when you cluster them up in some way. Bunch formations are stacked formations as well, where you stack receivers on top of one another. Um, there's also what they call snug, where you put a receiver really close together. Um, there's minus splits, where you put receivers uh, closer to the line of scrimmage near a tight end or an offset wing, uh, which is two tight ends, but once offset and once in line on the line of scrimmage, creating a bunch because of clustered formation. So you get the picture, right? Clustered receivers together in any form, whether that be running backs, tight ends, or wide receivers, we call those bunch formations. And it is tough to defend them because a bunch formation forces you to read and react to a receiver's release rather than reroute them. Yeah, you can't you, redirect them. You right? can't redirect them or reroute them because they're in a cluster. You're just going to get picked or rubbed. Pick route, rub route, depending on if you're an offensive guy. I call them pick routes because I most of them are illegal. Because you're a but DB. <laughs> I'm a Receivers DB. call them rubs. Receivers call them rub <laughs> routes. It uh, depends on. It's like uh, tax evasion or tax avoidance. It depends on what side of the law you're on there. All right? But uh, same thing. It, but you can get you can get picked off, rubbed, uh, rubbed, and then, you know, obviously you can leave a wide open receiver. And, and there are teams that usually try to zone up that concept. We used to uh, play tango, which, you know, means one guy would take the inside cut, one guy takes the outside cut. Uh, and usually you have one player that will play press on the tip of the bunch formation, whatever that may be. And there are different types of bunch. Uh, Sark loves the tripod bunch, which is essentially a triangle. Uh, the guys, they are the tips of the triangle, and there's always a tip of the, the, the triangle there, and you try to play press on that guy to disrupt the timing. That's really the only one you can reroute the, the other two guys are pretty much going to have a free release and that's the trouble for texas now last season i brought this up a lot and bama last season were really hurt texas with the bunch formations when the bama quarterback bryce young last season was targeting any player re, uh, running a route from a bunch formation he had over an 80 percent completion percentage for tech that was 70 plus percent uh, for iowa state it was upwards of 80 percent too Right? So you're talking about really high completion percentage because you can get receivers open with freer releases. And Texas has a hard time being able to read and react to those route combinations. In the Bama game, again, something that came up in the Bama game, bunch formations. Uh, it was the only, I don't know why Tim Reese didn't do more of it. It's one of the only things that worked for him. Yeah. Uh, I, I, how about this? So are the bunch formations versus Alabama, they were, they had an 80 Seven percent completion percentage when he was targeting any player coming out of bunch formation. Um, and if you go, that was also the two point conversion. Yeah. Also targeting a player that was coming out of bunch formations. Uh, if you go look at you, if you go look at total, like look at the last two games and in the Bama game, by the way, twenty four. If you go look at it without the two point conversion, you're looking at a twenty four. Yards per attempt, <laughs> targeting bunch formations. They all their big plays were out of bunch formations. That thirty-nine yard touchdown to Nye Black, whatever the tight end, out of bunch. The forty-nine yard touchdown was a motion to stack. The uh, twenty-six yard on third and seventeen, targeting bunch. Twenty-eight yard reception on third and eight, targeting bunch. Targeting bunch. I don't know why I say Tom Reese should have done it more. 
He didn't he didn't notice the trend. <laughs> uh, he should have figured it out. He didn't. Um, and the, so the two touchdowns came out a bunch, averaging like 24 yards per attempt. Texas has a hard time reading it. And if Texas doesn't get home, now Texas did get a lot of sacks and a lot of pressure. So I think for Texas, if they get home, then you don't have to worry about any of this. But the few times they didn't get home, Jalen Milrow, who's not necessarily an accurate quarterback, had really high accuracy numbers when he was targeting bunch formation. So I said, okay, let me go see if Rice had any success out of bunch uh and rice actually 60 percent completion percentage for rice not bad uh but they had a 37 yarder remember the david bender play that was targeting a player out of a bunch formation um they had an 11 yard reception on a third and four targeting bunch formation it got them a first down uh so they averaged over 11 yards per attempt uh targeting bunch so i went back and uh did the numbers so you're talking about just so far this season uh, over 78% completion percentage when a, tar- a p- opposing quarterback is targeting bunch. You're looking at a first down touchdown rate of 64%. You're looking at an explosive play rate of 50%. And you're looking at just a first down rate of 50%. Over 18 yards per attempt. Something to targeting watch. Targeting bunch formation. So like I said, it's a critique. I'm not being critical. Well, defense no. playing really well but that's something to watch and by the way like i pointed out it was an issue last season as well and tech uh really bama did it first and tech really exposed texas in it oklahoma state used a lot of it too uh, they didn't have as much success but they used a lot of it iowa state uh used a lot of it and had a ton of success versus texas and you can see early on uh it was one it was one of the only passing concepts that worked for Bama so you will see it again I'll watch film of Wyoming to tell you if Wyoming does a lot of it even if they don't they're going to do a lot of it versus Texas because it's one of the concepts that works I will point this out though I did tweet out before the game that uh, Texas uh, coaches need to be concerned and worried about the bunch sets for Alabama because they could run not bunch sets but sorry the empty sets for Alabama and uh, worried about Jalen Milrow as a runner I threw that out there and I said just Texas needs to have a plan for it I went back and watched all of their empty sets from the game and yeah it turns out they did have a really good plan for empty and Alabama had, they were three of six uh throwing out of empty formation they did have some big runs out of empty three rushes out of empty that a couple of those ended up with first downs but considering what Bryce Young did out of empty formation in 2022 against Texas 90 percent completion percentage and JT Daniels what he did in week one against Texas 85 percent completion percentage passing out of empty formation you did not have those types of numbers with Jalen Miro out of empty and like I said they used it a lot I ended up with nine plays that I counted for Alabama um, running out of empty so they actually actually more than that at 10 dropbacks so 13 plays total that they ran that haven't run out of empty and they didn't really get much. And how about this? Out of the five sacks Texas got, three of them was Alabama playing out of empty formation. So I told Texas, hey, man, make sure you have a plan to neutralize Jalen Miro out of empty. They had a great plan. It worked really well. So I know I, I was a little critical of them defending bunch formation, but I'll be very complimentary of the way they defended empty formation against Alabama. Great job by well, BK and the crew. Uh... It's the insights you only get right here on Ian Rod B because that is something, you know, the, the Texas opponents moving forward are going to be looking for things to try to attack a very good defense. And, uh, you know, just like you just found, that's one that they'll work on. Sark did say yesterday at the Monday news conference, you know, he, that was one of the things he cited that he thinks they need to continue to improve on is their their coverages in the back end. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the safety play uh, needs to improve. And um, that's the goal, right? As Sark just said, and you heard him in the headlines, you know, championship teams get better as the year goes on. Yep. Uh, this will not our, define our season. And we got to build on it because, as we said, that would be disappointing if you can win that game that emphatically and not finish the deal and and achieve the goal, which is the Big 12 championship. Because at this point, if you win the Big 12 championship, you're going to be in the conversation for the 14 playoff. And you put yourself into that spot. That's just the reality of it. And what you've done by beating Alabama by 10 points on the road uh, in kind of dominating fashion for the world to see, you, you've kind of earned a mulligan. If you do stub your toes one place along the way, but still win the Big 12 championship and you're 11-1 and one, or 12-1, and one, Rod, you're going to be in the conversation TC, and maybe in it. TC, you didn't win the Big 12. That's right. That's right. You have a chance. <laughs> earned but, that mulligan. But just like one. Yeah. But just one. Yeah, You'd yeah, like to run one. the table, as you just yeah. said, and that'll be the goal.